live now by Dr. Emmanuel Navon, Research Fellow from the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security. Dr. Navon, thank you so much for joining me. Now, it is estimated that 60% of Azerbaijan's arms are supplied by Israel, Israel or possibly even more than that. Is this estimate accurate and how much of this deal is this deal actually worth to Israel? Israel has been developing strong ties with Azerbaijan in recent years, mostly because Azerbaijan is an ally of Israel against Iran. Azerbaijan is a Muslim Shia country, but a secular one that very much resents Iran. And Israel needs Azerbaijan's natural gas and oil resources. So there's a win-win relationship between Israel and Azerbaijan in terms of Israel Israel's energy needs and Azerbaijan's security needs vis-a-vis -vis Iran. And therefore, there's a community of interest between the two countries, a country that was visited by the Prime Minister of Israel about three years ago. So an interaction between the two countries, mutual interest and the common enmity towards Iran. Let's not talk just about Azerbaijan here, but just on a wider scope. How crucial are military industries for Israel's economy in terms of job creation, GMP exports, hard currency and public relations even? Historically, the military industry has been critical to develop Israel's foreign relations from the early 1960s. Via its military industry, Israel was able to build strong relations around the world during the Cold War and after the Cold War. It is still the case today. Israel has added value in military technology and intelligence, something that is very helpful for its foreign policy, its foreign relations. It's true also throughout Africa and also in Latin America. It's true also in the Caucasus with a country like Azerbaijan. And of course, it is important for the Israeli economy. So let's talk about the moral implications of deals like this. I mean, in this case, it could harm Israel's relationship with Armenia. What could Israel lose there? Israel has also been criticised in the past for other arms deals which countries have accused of human rights violations. So what could be a problem that could arise here? This is a typical case of the traditional tension in foreign policy between political realism or realpolitik and moral principles. Israel is, of course, not the only country facing such a dilemma. But I think this is a very interesting case study in Israel's foreign policy dilemma, a relation between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Because historically, and I would say emotionally, our ties are with Armenia, another non-Muslim minority of the Middle East that was the victim of genocide by the Turks in the early 20th century. And historically, there have been very strong ties and empathy between the Jews and the Armenians. But then comes in realpolitik, our interests with Azerbaijan, which are stronger today because we have stronger interests with Azerbaijan than with Armenia. And therefore, Israel is more tilting towards the realpolitik side of its foreign policy. A lot of people in Armenia are upset about it. It's understandable. And of course, it's not the only case in which Israel faces moral dilemmas when it comes to its policy of arms exports. Another case was, for example, in with Burma in recent in recent years. And so it's not the only case, but I think that the here it's a very good example of the traditional tension between political realism and moral principles. But as I said, with Azerbaijan, we have very strong interest in recent years. Going back now to the military to arms sales, what are the biggest sales? I mean, drones, missile systems. What is it? What's the most? Uh, what, what what does Israel earn the most money out of here? Well, any technology that has a high added value thanks to it, uh, high tech in, in drones, for example, in, in surveillance uh, uh, technologies, uh, Israel is known for uh, its uh, uh, cutting edge uh, technology in the military uh, as opposed to other countries. And also when it comes to Israel, you don't have the legal limitations imposed, for example, 
by the U.S. Uh, arms industry or the European arms industry. Research fellow Dr. Emmanuel Navon, thank you so much for your insight.